Welcome back to the living room and to my next batch of artworks. So since we have decided to do this by theme, the theme today is turning points. So these are like critical points where the artwork is connected to a complete change in the way that I work or in what I'm doing and leaps forward. So this first artwork, um, which I'm kind of reluctant to show you, is is by me, um, and I it wouldn't still be on the wall except that I made it for Ben for his birthday, and he's very fond of it, so he's he's made me keep it up there, and it is actually quite interesting in that I made this for him. Um, a long time ago when I was working in the photographic industry and I wasn't being creative I wasn't making any art of any sort really but I was doing a fair bit of sewing and this is a, a textile picture here and I came across the work of a textile artist called Janet Bolton who made the most incredible pictures of Yorkshire Moors um, in textile and there was just something about the way she worked that really got me excited and I wanted to have a go at working in the same sort of way that she did. So I started experimenting and making little textile pictures and this is the swimming pool where Ben used to swim so he used to occasionally sort of go and train and I would go and um, watch him swim from time to time. So I thought that I would make him a picture and one of the things that I loved about Janet's work was this kind of random shape and the way she patched uh picture uh, patched bits of cloth together so that's that's what I went for and then this bit of silk which I I didn't have any art equipment at the time so I think I used cartridge pen ink to paint it with and you know it's all it was all very much stuff that I found to make it but it was interesting in terms of where I went when I did start printmaking. So I started printmaking for real in about 2005, I guess, and after a long break from art school. Um, so these were really helpful, these little embroidery pictures, the, the textile pictures. In When I went back to printmaking, I wasn't just starting up from where I left off at, at art school in the 80s I had actually started to think more about piecing things together composition stuff like that so my first prints kind of were naturally following on from this style of working um, and there's a sort of echo in this still today in the work that I do so that's enough about me and my textile picture so moving on from me experimenting with textiles to an absolute master. This is uh, work by Japanese printmaker Kiyoshi Sato and he is one of my all-time favourite Japanese woodblock printmakers and he was working in the sort of mid 20th century and I absolutely love his work. This is definitely the picture that I would be grasping if the house were on fire and I had to take the really precious stuff with me because I, I've had it for years now and I, I love it to bits. So when I learned about Japanese woodblock printing, I learned about classical Japanese woodblocks made in workshops during the Edo period and the, the wonderful skill of that. And then I learned about the 20th century Japanese uh, woodblock printers who were known as creative printers, susaku hanga printers. And instead of working with printers and carvers, these artists were responsible for designing, cutting and printing their own work. And I love Kiyoshi Soto's work for his colours and also the textures that he creates in his printing. And just the handling of the subject matter. He has such a flair for composition and design. So to actually own one is a great honour. And I learn so much from this print. Um, doesn't matter how many times I see it, I always sort of see something new and, and find something else to explore in it. So yeah, Kiyoshi Sato, big hero of mine.
Some of you might well recognise this print. It's by printmaker Ian Phillips and he prints in his own right and also as part of a collaboration called Pine for Oda, uh, whose work you might know. And he is uh, important as a kind of turning point in the way that I was working. For a start, I became friends with him uh, on the basis of sort of being amazed by his work. I, I sent him an email to say that I'd stumbled across his work and I was blown away by it. And he was kind enough to reply. And we got talking about Japanese woodblock and I said I'd done this residency and he wanted to learn. So he came and spent a weekend and we fooled about making a Japanese woodblock print. And as a thank you, he gave me this print. So I was really, really lucky to get this. And um, I love it to bits. Now, Ian was very influenced by Japanese prints when he first started as a printmaker. This is a lino cut. And you can see the sort of use of the frame very like a Japanese print. And the other thing that I love about this is his use of texture. So when he made this, Ian was working in water-based ink and he was printing by hand. So like technical masterpiece, for one thing. Um, and the other thing is the really interesting way that he controls tone through wiping and scraping and lots of layering and the kind of subtle bleeds of colour. So there's there's a really, really clever referencing of Japanese work. And at the same time, it's sort of completely Ian's as well. And this particular colour palette, apart from being gorgeous and something that I love, is, is, is sort of very characteristic of a lot of his work. So this print is is beautiful but it's also a really good reminder because you know over the years I talked to Ian quite a lot as he was already um, well established in his career as an artist whereas I was just sort of starting up in 2009 because I went back to printmaking in 2005 and I met him I guess in about 2009 and I was still not very confident and he, he said to me one day, he, we were talking about this whole business of being a proper artist. And, and he said to me, well, look, you know, if you keep behaving like a woman with a, a shed at the bottom of the garden who plays around at making prints, that's all you'll ever be. You need to think of yourself as an artist printmaker in a studio making art. And, um, you yeah, know, he was right. And I changed my attitude and I haven't looked back really so you know huge thank you to Ian and I love this print and I love kind of his attitude and the way that he works so um, big influence on me and a big changing point in my attitude so thank you for joining me for this little video about turning points and I hope you'll join me for the next one